Hello, I'm JW, and this is a transformer, and uh, this has been used in a variety of other videos, mainly to supply a certain amount of current to various test items. Uh, more importantly, it's also used for its intended purpose, which is to supply various power tools. And the point of these is that uh, in the UK, the standard voltage is 230 volts, and that's uh, 230 to ground, so grabbing hold of that is uh, quite likely going to be severe injury or even fatal. The uh, thing with this, though, is that the output is 110, but it's centre tapped to ground, so essentially any shot between any live part and ground is only going to be 55 volts. And, of course, 55 volts is highly unlikely to cause any kind of uh, death or injury, and therefore it's commonly used for outside tools on construction sites and the like. But anyway, the point about this is that the uh, power lead going in is actually uh, somewhat damaged, so we're going to need to do a bit of repair and maintenance on this thing. Now, so this thing's fairly old. It was made in the UK, as it says uh, over there, upside down. And uh, another thing that's uh, actually wrong here is that this bolt here is smaller on the top there than these three. Now, I think that was replaced at some time because one of them got missing somehow. So, uh, anyway, let's just uh, remove these and see what we've got inside. Not really going to be much to see here because these things are generally potted, so you can't actually see the transformer part itself. Just going to be the various connections inside so let's take these off here the nut is actually underneath the lid so that just generally falls off so there we've just got the two components there the uh, screw there and the nut which fits in a recess underneath which is shaped for that to fit in so obviously you can tighten it up without having uh, it rotating so uh, these i believe are the original ones that actually seems rather wonky on the bottom anyhow yeah, there's the nut there. Oh, it's got a piece of uh, junk stuck in it. Oh well, never mind. And then this one here is obviously of a smaller dimension for some reason. Not clear why uh, that is. So it may have got lost at some point in the distant past. Yes, it's a similar size, although it's not. Uh, it's certainly not the same there. It's certainly a smaller dimension. Anyhow, we can obviously uh, sort that out later. And the uh, lid comes off there, just uh, some kind of plastic material, fairly heavy duty. Flip around the edge to keep moisture and whatever out. And uh, the uh, nut for that, yeah, that was obviously too small, it kind of wedged in, so probably be replacing at least that one. So, anyway, this is what we've got here. So, there's the transformer down there, and as suspected, it is pretty much all sealed in uh, resin or something like that. So. Uh, a whole lot to see, but basically it's just a transform with a uh, input winding and then the output with uh, 110 and a centre tap, so nothing uh, too surprising. These are the output sockets here, we can see they're just basically wired into uh, each one there, just in parallel obviously. So here's the ground connection, green and yellow, and then we've got our two wires here, which are for the two lots of 55. So just loops one to the other, and then these solid ones here are going to be off of the transformer. These do seem a bit uh, loose there, presumably that's by uh, design, but uh, yes, the terminal seem to move a bit in the socket. Now this here is a circuit breaker, and it's just got a press button on the side there, so if it was overloaded then that will pop out. Never actually been overloaded or popped out, so whether it works is another matter. And then here is our cable, so we've got this rather nasty mess on the outside, it just goes straight through in here. And then we've got this rather strange looking uh, block thing on the inside. And so the outside there has absolutely nothing. I'm not sure whether there was originally some kind of fixing over this. It seems a bit odd. It would just go straight into the side like that. But uh, anyway, this is say many years old, so who knows what it was like originally. You also see down inside here there's the remains of some kind of sand filling, but most of it seems to have disappeared. So uh, there's a little tiny bit of sand down there. It may well have been filled up to the top at one point, but uh, again, it's not filled up now, and uh, it's not like there's a hole in it or anything where it leaked out, so again, not particularly uh, clear what the deal with that is. Now, in terms of the wiring, it's uh, fairly straightforward here, so this is the cable coming in, so the line goes straight over to this circuit breaker, so obviously if that uh, pops open it will disconnect the incoming power. The other side there just goes down to the transformer, and that's just a single uh, enamelled copper. Neutral comes over to this terminal block, which seems a bit uh, kakaroo, just flapping about in the breeze there. 
straight through to the other side of the transformer and then the earth there again through the terminal block and that goes down to uh, fixing down on the transformer and also of course across to the two output sockets as well. So uh, all we need to do really is just get rid of the uh, connections here and then take this thing out and extract what's left of the cable. So what we'll do is just cut out the uh, existing cable here, we'll just cut those off. That will leave obviously the connections uh, where they went previously. And then we'll just cut through the uh, fixings there, so that's now released. And there's a screw on the exterior, so, so we can undo that. So just some threaded uh, item there. And uh, that presumably holds some kind of clamp in there, so I think what we'll do is just cut off this uh, cable here, because obviously it's the damaged bit, so get rid of that. So here's the cable clamp thing, so just hold there for a screw to go in, and the inside is some kind of solid plastic material, so there's the inside which is fine, and there's of course the outside where the damage has occurred, so you can see the neutral poking through there, and as I said before the uh, actual earth conductor has been damaged, certainly not uh, what we want. Let's just pull that back over there, so yeah, the earth is completely gone basically, it's just torn through. Line and neutral apparently are still intact, but uh, obviously it wouldn't be for long in this state. It doesn't look like there's anything broken off of the outside of here, it's a fairly smooth edge on the plastic. So it seems odd it wouldn't have a proper fixing on the outside, but uh, anyway that can go in the bin because clearly that is useless. You'll see the size of the uh, flex there, it's 1.5 millimetres squared and 3 core obviously. Now we've got here is a uh, cable gland, I just happen to have one, or a whole box of these, but uh, this is a uh, M16 which means it goes through a 16 millimetre hole. It's a black one there, and the cable we have here, or the flex, will fit in there decently and snugly like that, so that's sort of before tightening and then when it's tightened out obviously that will uh, grip onto that decently like that. Now this hole isn't actually that size, so I just need to uh, drill that out to a bigger dimension. Now a couple of ways you could mount this, one of which would be uh, to have this on the outside, which would be the more traditional way. The only problem with that is it's going to stick out quite a significant distance there, so uh, that's certainly not going to be ideal because it's quite likely to get knocked and broke. So what I think we'll do instead is to uh, put it the other way round, so that the actual gripping and sitting bit is on the inside. And then on the outside we just have that, which has that sort of rounded edge there, and it's got a bit of flexibility in it, so moderately similar to what it had before, but without that uh, fairly sharp edge there. And bear in mind this is sort of 15 plus years old, and it's only just busted through, so probably not going to be a problem if we do that. So I'll just uh, cut out this hole a bit bigger, and we can get this fitted in and reconnected. So hole's now bigger, so this will fit in. Also cleaned up the power cord, so so again, nothing wrong with that, it's not uh, damaged other than the end. And to make the hole bigger we use this highly inappropriate tool, it's one of these drills with cutting bits on the side, you can just grunge out holes to appropriate dimensions, so that's what we use with that. So let's uh, take this and say if we put it in from the inside, then uh, when the nut is on the exterior, then that will just leave that uh, reasonably smooth edge there for it to pull through. And of course the flex will go through. And we can obviously tighten that down on the inner side, and then that will just give a reasonable sort of flex piece on the outside like that. Now this is uh, this is rubber on the outside, but I'm not entirely sure what these are on the inside because they're actually quite shiny as if they're almost like PVC, but uh, anyway, that's what it came with, so that's what we're going to be using. Now in terms of attaching this, obviously we'll just place the wires into the hole on the outside. And we'll just pull those through. And we're just going to leave a bit of a stub uh, sticking through there, sort of an inch or so. And then we can uh, tighten down this inner fixing ring here. And that will grip onto it, so provide a seal there, so that we don't have to get water and dust coming in. Not that this should of course be outside where there's water. Now uh, that of course could pull out with enough uh, pulling force on it. So what we'll do is also put a cable tie here, just a uh, standard black nylon cable tie, and uh, if we put that around the cable there, 
So we'll tighten that up and then that will grip on the cable. That will prevent then this pulling out. Let's say just relying on the friction of that is not necessarily desirable, but uh, trim the excess away. So now that won't actually be able to pull out of there no matter what. And then just a question of reconnecting these uh, internal wires. So two over here, of course, uh, fairly straightforward. This isn't necessarily the best uh, connection arrangement, but nevertheless, it's what it had from when it was manufactured. So that's what it's going to get when it goes back in. So this is just for these two here. We'll uh, just trim those down a bit. Leave them relatively long, but uh, not too much of a problem. So just strip the uh, wires on that. Yeah, there's some sort of rubber material. Not entirely sure what, so it seems quite shiny. So we'll just twist those ends together. You see this has got a lot of very fine strands in, the point being that it's a very flexible lead as it's obviously going to be moved around fairly often. And then uh, we can obviously put those back into the terminals over here. So that's those ones there. You can see those just wires go down there to the side, just down to the transform windings directly, and so they're going to be enameled copper. So not too much of a problem. Now this thing here, that came off rather easily, didn't it? Uh, this has a uh, spade terminal on, so I need to get uh, another one of those. And of course that will go onto the line conductor here. So I've got a red uh, terminal here. Red goes up to 1.5 millimetres squared, which uh, is what this is, so that's fine. This is actually an insulated one, so it's got the plastic all the way up to the end there, but you can see inside it's the same sort of terminal thing in there. So no problem with that, and that will just slide onto the terminal we have there, but obviously we're not doing that just yet. So just strip some of the insulation there to perfect length. So basically we wanted to go inside, but not have any copper showing outside of the terminal there. So it's a question of fitting this on now, because this is the basically the maximum size of the wire. It's going to be a fairly tight fit already, so just uh, work that onto the end. And then the point is here that we don't have any copper showing at the actual end of the terminal here. It's all just the insulation and the copper has gone up inside. And then the crimping tool here, it's one of these with the coloured jaws, so also it's the red one in this particular case. So just place it inside, red being in the middle. And then we can just crimp down onto that. And then that just puts the two uh, indents into that one. And this one actually also prints in the size as well, which is 1.5 in this case. So this thing then will just uh, press over the terminal here. Uh, let's get that uh, properly aligned there. Just push it over, and that's pretty much it. And that one is uh, partially hanging off, so we'll uh, give that a good shove as well. These things generally do fit decently well. If you get any of these that are actually loose, then it might be tempted just to sort of try and cinch down on the terminal bits there. But uh, the reality is that if they've become loose, then cut it off and put a new one on because uh, trying to sort of crimp down the ends very rarely works. It uh, never going to come loose again. So just make sure those are pressed on fully. And obviously we did our wires there previously, so that's fine. And uh, now what we've got to do is put the lid back. Now it seems that these are M6 in size. This is one of the old ones here, and this is a new one here. Got a whole pack of these. Apparently never opened for some reason. So uh, what we'll do is to uh, just replace those. And uh, because we can, we're going to replace all of them, even though we've got three at the top, apparently sensible. And we're going to put some new nuts in as well. And these have the nylon locking insert because uh, that would avoid them obviously coming unscrewed. So uh, that will do. So we've got four of those. And this is uh, going to be the same size, that's one of the old nuts there, so for them, and then we'll just get rid of those and uh, put that straight in the bin there. Don't collect manky old screws. So uh, let's get some more out of this packet. Oh, there's an old wash nut there, so yeah, get rid of that as well. Straight in the bin. Now then, so uh, these things, uh, it's just standing up with a uh, piece of uh, plastic or nylon or something in the top. So the deal is that these will tighten up in the usual way, but then when it gets into that one, there'll be a certain amount of resistance, which will hopefully prevent them from coming unscrewed at a later time. And these will just fit in the appropriate recess under the bottom here. And then we'll just put the nut in from the top. 
And that's obviously going to start to bite down there, and then we'll just tighten it down. And these actually go all the way through, so uh, it doesn't actually uh, matter that they're a bit longer because they're just going to stick out a little bit underneath. So that's it, uh, all finished there, just uh, cleaned it up on the outside. It is fairly grubby here, most of this is uh, embedded in and isn't going to come off. And the screws there uh, do uh, protrude slightly below there, but not actually a huge problem. We can say this is all recessed here anyway, but just slightly longer than the originals. Now because this has been modified, we do need to obviously test it to make sure that the connections are correct inside. And it's obviously not going to uh, put live things out on the earth or something stupid like that. So. I'm going to use this thing. Um, we're not going to use the actual appliance tester, which is in the house, for several reasons, mainly because it's in the house and this is not. But more importantly, that the uh, appliance tester has a 15 amp circuit breaker as the input on it. And because this is a massive inductive load, this will trip 16 amp circuit breakers pretty much all the time. So if we try to use that, it's just going to trip the circuit breaker again and again and again. And therefore, that's not going to get very far. So this will trip uh, 20 amp circuit breakers quite often as well. Normally it's okay on 32s. And that's primarily because this is just basically a big transformer. And when the uh, magnetic field is there, without any load connected, the actual idle current is quite low. But uh, when it's initially switched on, of course, there's no magnetic field there. So all you're relying on is the resistance of the windings, which is incredibly low and appears basically as a short circuit for a brief period. So obviously, uh, so not much point using on that other thing there. So we use this thing here, we'll just do a couple of basic uh, checks on this. It's only a uh, transformer after all, so not a huge amount to really do. I'll just position that so you can actually see it. So we we'll just go to continuity, and we'll just uh, use these two leads here, we'll just uh, zero those so we don't have anything on it. So we'll just check between the line and neutral, and we should see the basic DC resistance of the transform winding. So say 0.92, so basically less than one ohm. So turning that on, in theory, you get uh, a region of sort of 200 plus amps going through for a short period. So hence why it trips uh, lower rated circuit breakers. Now the other thing we need to do is to check that we have continuity between the earth pin here and the earth terminals in the outlets there. So just stop it in the uh, earth hole. Yeah, 0.03, that's fine. And we'll just try that as well. Yeah, yeah that's perfectly fine, so uh, no problem with that. And then the final thing we'll do is just check on the insulation resistance. So it's between the earth pin here, and we'll do it between the line and the neutral on the input. So uh, we use the 500 volt setting. That's greater than 500 mega ohms, so that's fine. And we'll just check with the other one as well. Yep, absolutely fine. And then we'll also check with the output, of course, because uh, that's obviously a separate winding on the transformer. So we'll just go into one of the poles there. And yeah, greater than 500. And of course, it should be the same on the other one because those are going to be effectively connected together anyway. So yeah, that's uh, also perfectly fine. So that's it then, all uh, tested up there. So we just powered up, obviously, to make sure that uh, it's not going to obviously blow fuses and the like. So there we go, probably hear it buzzing away there. And again, fairly normal, because uh, particularly old transformers tend to, as bits inside, generally work a little bit loose. So absolutely fine there. And so it won't trip the uh, circuit in here, because this is not on a 16 or a 20 amp circuit breaker. It's actually on a 32. And it's also a Type C as well. So that's uh, that repaired, fairly uh, straightforward deal there, but uh, nevertheless uh, certainly necessary because they that wire was obviously uh, tearing through, and uh, one conductor had already been exposed, and the other two wouldn't be far behind. And say so that is actually used for powering actual tools when uh, using them for the purpose. So it is uh, necessary to have this thing. So that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.